here we are, man. This is our very first audio experience. I love it. I don't know what we're going to try and do here. I don't know where this is going to go, but we're going to have some fun. We're going to try and talk to some cool people. We're actually recording this um, after we have probably three or four solid episodes. So um, we wanted to start off with a little bit of an intro. So we have Dakota. Uh, Hello. Here the, with the luscious, lovely blonde hair. I aspire thank to be you, Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to be like him one day. And my name is Jim. And uh, you're just going to have to put up with my, my uh, messages dinging in the background from time to time. <laughs> so uh, to kick this off, I think the sit with me audio experience is what we're shooting for here. We may change the name a little bit, but the goal of the audio experience is to speak to service industry people, good people, fun people, salespeople, really anybody. Um, maybe some entertainers, you never know mm -hmm. where it goes. Right. Right. I think we'll get into a little bit about me and the app here in a minute, Dakota, but I'd like to ask you a little bit about you and your background, because honestly, you're way more interesting than I am uh, probably <laughs> for the crowd that we're, we're shooting for here. Uh, given, given your life experience that you have going on right now. Yeah. So my many, many years, right. Your many, many <laughs> years of life experience. So give us, give us a couple minutes on that and uh, we'll see where it takes us, man. Okay, cool. Um, well, I think it was two, it was like two years ago and two months that I quit my job from Amazon. Um, I worked there. I've heard of. I know gas, shame on me, shame on me. Um, right. But, but the reason I did that is um, I had a really good experience there. I had the financial means to kind of like step away for a bit. And the way that like I saw my time at Amazon, because it is kind of like that goal company to work for, is like I saw point A to point B where there wasn't really anything fresh, exciting going on up until my retirement. And working there is like a pretty grueling job like I was working nights 12 hour shifts to where it started to feel like I wasn't even living I wasn't there was no like value post work like I was doing a great job there I was learning a lot um gaining experience but like outside of that it was just kind of like paying a lot on rent trying to sleep during the day like those type of experiences to where I was like you know what I'm confident enough in myself to like back out of that um, and pursue something new. And so what I did was um, through the power and influence of the internet was build a tiny home in a van. And I did that successfully. Uh -huh. And um, I've been traveling ever since then. So I wasn't, I started in Colorado, went all the way to Arizona, Utah, Nevada, all of the desert, and then down to Florida and all the good stuff there. So, and you like successfully documented that process too, right? Yes. As, as much as I could, it's kind of an yeah. interesting thing because like, I love videography. I like filming, like even as a kid, if I ever went on a vacation, I would either buy like a GoPro or something before or after I would, I would do it. Um, and so like my life on social media kind of was always based on a vacation or a trip or something cool. And then my life turned into like a full-time vacation and a full-time trip and all that. So it was something that I had to get used to because it, I wanted to enjoy the experience and kind of do all that, but also like continue to have something that like I could look back on after all this is done, whenever it is going to be done. Um, and just kind of like, continue to grow in that space as well i love it and now that's the goal for both of us right life to yeah. be a full-time vacation <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> i love it um so as for me um i'm a little different i'm not a social media kind of guy this is all brand new to me i am a sales guy slash computer nerd um i have worked in the legal industry uh, for 20 plus years a long time uh, mostly as a project manager. Um, and what we did was we managed the data for giant lawsuits. And eventually, uh, my friend and I started our own company called Q Discovery. Um, and we sold to lawyers. And, and I traveled around the country uh, as kind of the sales dude, 
grow in that business. Um, spent a lot of time in bars and restaurants, which will uh, make sense here when we start talking about the app that we've created in just a second. Mm -hmm. um, and we sold it and we sold it again. And I've sold it a third time. So uh, that company, Q Discovery, no longer exists. It was a fun ride while it lasted. And now, um, as of actually three days, I am officially jobless um and no longer have a day job yeah i don't i don't know that i'm retired but yeah. um, i might say that though i may say i'm retired whenever i first quit i i said i was retired for a hot second yeah i think i may do the same thing it feels nice to say and then you're like holy shit wait a minute i still got to make some money and mm -hmm. money coming in so hopefully our our app venture will work out and start bringing us a little bit of money eventually right so I think the big thing for me was I was just cruising around, uh, spending time in bars and restaurants as a traveling sales guy. And I was just struck by how servers are no different than, um, than me uh, as far as being a salesperson. Their tips are the same as my commissions. And I kept thinking over and over, there has to be a better way. There has to be a way for these folks to uh, communicate with their regulars, let their schedules be known influence who comes to sit with their, them at their tables. And mm -hmm. it just seemed bizarre to me that that type of thing didn't exist. So I built it. And, uh, and here we are. Right. Do you want to kind of tap into a little bit of what the app entails and kind of what the goal of the app is? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So um, the way the app works is it's essentially meant to be a sales tool for servers. A lot of people get that twisted. A lot of people want to think, well, it's for customers to pick out a server. That, that works too, of course, mm -hmm. um, and that is a function of it. But the way that it's intended to work is for uh, a server or a bartender or a chef or a busboy or whatever to use the tool as a sales tool. So they can set up a profile, they can build their brand, they can put their schedules into the app, um, and then they can market to their favorite and best customers. So mm -hmm. the app gives these folks the ability not only to build a profile, but then to send indivi individual or mass messages to their favorite customers. So if, uh, if Dakota and I walk into a, a restaurant and we both sit down and have a, a bite to eat and I'm a huge pain in the neck and I, I'm not very nice and I treat the person like a servant, not a server and don't leave a good tip, they're probably not going to want to see me ever again. And they hope that next time I come in, I don't sit with them. When Dakota goes in there um, with his handsome good looks and his <laughs> kindness and treating them really well and being easygoing and leaves a, a nice 25, 30% tip, they're going to want to let Dakota know when they're working. And so the, the sit with me app is meant to take some of the awkwardness out of that process. Instead of giving Dakota your schedule or, and hoping he remembers it, or um, maybe giving your phone number and not sure how that'll go, or if it's the social media that you're trying to share, not sure how that'll go. It really makes it a lot easier to just say, hey, follow me on sit with me. And now mm -hmm. you'll be able to see my schedule. You'll be able to communicate with me. You'll be able to see when I work and I can let you know what's going on here and that sort of thing. So it's really meant to help get the best customers like Dakota to come back and sit in the servers section, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. I think um, once I was brought on and like I started talking to a lot more servers that either are just friends of mine or like ones that you've introduced me to, the the big thing that I realized is there's there's kind of two things happening is a lot of the stuff that already exists in the app, people are doing or trying to do, but there is like a level of like privacy or uncertainty about like what is appropriate to share. Like because the the ones that have been doing it their whole life, their career servers or bartenders, like they have a huge customer base that they know the value of it and have supported them through thick and thin. And especially like during COVID right now, like a lot of these people I've heard um, through their experiences have stepped up to kind of like continue to ensure that they have some sort of financial safety net. But um, I think 
for people who may just be getting started in the industry or, or may, you know, see and hear the value of what these other people are doing, there is some timidness or timidness, I don't know how to say that appropriately, to yeah. sharing your Facebook, sharing your Instagram, sharing your phone number. Um, and I think that's kind of like the magic of what seems to be happening here. That's a great point. Cause you know, as I think about this, there's a number of people that are like anti-tip and it's mm -hmm. just their job and blah, blah, blah. And those people can kindly fuck off. That's cool. We don't care. We're not, we're not <laughs> here for those people. But to your point, I've heard a number of stories of just people being good people that have built somewhat of a relationship with the servers that they like. They go, you know, people are very habitual. They go to the same places around the same time. They eat the same food. They drink the same drinks, that sort of thing. Well, you get to know people, you get to know your servers and you, you know, you talk to them a little bit about your family here and there, or they mm -hmm. get to know your family because you got your family in there with you. And, um, and I think people inherently want to help out other people. So like your example of COVID is a great one, or if somebody, let's say gets pregnant and is out for a few months or is sick and needs a break or whatever it is. A lot of times those people that they've developed relationships with those customers care, they kind of care, they wonder for where sure. so-and-so is gone. And so it's kind of neat to maybe take that thought process and build off of it and allow these servers to actually cement these relationships in a safe place so that if this type of stuff goes on, the community or their friends or their, their folks that have been sitting with them can, can support them a little bit or can follow them to the next restaurant. Um, and, and really, I think that's, you asked me about, you know, kind of the idea behind the audio experience. Mm -hmm. It's sort of that in a nutshell is like helping servers, you know, build their brand bartenders. I'm going to say servers a lot, but it's really anybody mm -hmm. in the service industry, um, helping those folks build their brand, helping them build the relationships, just like I built as a salesperson talking about, you know, kind things that people have done times they go out of their way to, um, to help a customer to do something nice for a customer to make sure the customer has the best experience possible. Mm -hmm. um, and the ways that the customers reciprocate that and take care of them and, and probably, you know, a lot of sales tips, tactics, things that they may do to make sure the customer experience is better. Um, and just really anything around positivity and kindness and empathy that, that can be tied to anyway, loosely or, or directly tied to the restaurant industry and that whole dining experience. Because I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of folks out there that appreciate the relationships they, they have in, in the service industry. Yeah, no doubt. I think the other thing too that you've mentioned is, um, and I think this goes well with it, is like, you know, people kind of sign up whatever local restaurant is hiring or, or kind of whoever that looks like. But some of these people that are in these really nice restaurants, they're making six figures a year, potentially based on how well they do and kind of the market that they're exposed to. And I think doing this or giving people a tool to kind of improve their um, service repertoire or um, their skill set kind of allows them to continue to grow up into an environment like that or a restaurant like that or you know however absolutely. that looks um, yeah absolutely i've said a number of times this is a way to for servers to give themselves a raise and then start building a bit of a resume and a and a sales book we used to call it a brag book like all the awards that i got as a salesperson or the numbers that i achieved whatever it was mm -hmm. we would put together what we call the brag book of all our sales accomplishments that was in the back of my mind, part of this, like as a server, if you're really killing it and you've got a bunch of people that come in to see you, sure, the food has to be decent and the atmosphere has to be all right. But you're as a, as a server, you're definitely a big part of why people come back. So you can start to build those accomplishments and, um, and take them maybe to the next restaurant or take, make sure you get the best, best section in your, um, in your restaurant or the best hours or whatever it is and use this information to build your brand personally you know as a server mm -hmm. you know, which I think is really cool like it could you know I mean you know knock on wood this thing continues to grow and works and it could change the industry quite a bit and and start to you know treat servers like rock star salespeople 
that help um, you know bring people in the door. And it could start at the local bar. It could start at the Bob Evans, wherever. Hmm. And those folks could work their way up to, I should have said Waffle House. We, we've talked a lot about the Waffle House. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they could work their way up to the nice fancy steak joint and, and be those folks that are making a hundred to $150,000 a year because they're at a, an amazing place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, well, I think people that tune into other episodes, like I think you've made it clear and I think it's worth saying that like, it's not just going to be a sales pitch every single episode, you know, there's going to be right. um, more value outside or more relatable value to whatever it is that um, people are looking for. So like, I guess going into that, like, what is it about your experience that people may losing my words here? Yeah, I'm <laughs> with you. I got you. But uh, um, so well, no, I, mean, I, I so like I think, like it or not, I've been around for a lot of years, been fairly successful. I've been through right. you know a number of companies. Um, uh, I've started a business and successfully exited that business. Mm -hmm. um, starting a new business now, um, kind of started dabbling in investments and cryptocurrency and NFTs and and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I think the goal is to really just kind of talk about whatever interests people along those lines, mm -hmm. um, but just supporting um, ideas and um, kindness and empathy and trying to talk through business. If it relates to, um, you know, the service industry, that's great. I've got a lot to learn in that area because oddly, uh, even though I have an app, that um, focuses on servers and bartenders in the service industry as a market. I have never myself worked in that industry. So I have a lot to learn. Um, but one thing I am good at is sales. And I think the, the key is that these folks are going to be salespeople. So anything that I can do to help um, uh, help these folks the, look at themselves as a salesperson and generate more money mm -hmm. for themselves, I think would be kind of key. I guess you could say I've been a regular um, a time or two. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's always people that I like. There's always, um, you know, I, I enjoy when somebody knows who I am when I go into a, a restaurant. Um, I enjoy um, when folks take care of the kids or look out for the kids and that sort of thing. And, mm -hmm. and I, I appreciate that as a salesperson and I work hard to get back and ask for that person. So, um, so I think I can offer some experience to servers on, what the regulars thinking mm -hmm. and, and what may help them, um, you know, become a little bit more attractive when it comes to getting repeat customers and regulars. Um, but mm -hmm. overall, I just want to, I just want to talk about fun stuff, have some laughs, um, be a little ridiculous at times and, um, hopefully, um, you know, give people a little bit of encouragement to, to do better and that they can make it through whatever they're going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think that's really cool. You know, like, I know a lot about you, obviously, and like, I perceive you as a mentor. And I think that's kind of like the root of what I wanted to get at is like, you know, how to, like, people are going to be able to learn a lot about you through the process of this audio experience. And I think, from my perspective, it's, it, there's a lot to learn, there's a lot to listen to from you. And I think I'm excited to kind of see what's to come with it. That'll be fun. And we'll see. I, I, I'm still wrapping <laughs> my mind around all, all that, whether or not, uh, there's anything amazing about me in particular, I don't know, but, um, but I do, I do like to hype people up. Um, I do like to make sure that people see their value and their worth. Um, I am super optimistic, which, um, drives some people nuts, but, and, you know, it doesn't matter what you're going through in life. Um, you know, there's an end, there's an end to both good and bad. There's an end to it and you got to keep your head up, push your way through, um, not get too high on all the good things that are going on and not get too low on all the bad things that are going on. So I do enjoy encouraging people. Um, you know, it's interesting when I, when I started my e-discovery company with, with my buddy, Matt, the one thing I thought of was that, you know, I managed the e-discovery world for a pretty large law firm here in Indiana. And I said to myself, you know, I think I can do this on a bigger scale. I could do it for the city or the region or whatever. I think I can continue to do this just bigger than this one law firm. And I sort of feel the same way about 
um, the handful of friends that I'm forever hyping up or mentoring mm-hmm. or talking through whatever, like, I feel like there's something there that I can, I can help more people um, see the bright side of things or work through a problem or whatever. So I, th- I am excited to maybe talk about some real stuff that people might be going through and, um, and see if there's anything I can do to help and share some of my struggles because, you know, I've messed up a million times and had to work through it myself. So uh, hopefully there's some of that, that that will help and we can share as well. Mm-hmm. And you too, man, you're the same way. Like, I mean, you've, in your, um, you know, albeit shorter time on this earth, you've been through yeah, for sure. a lot of stuff and, and you have, I think one thing, I don't know if we've mentioned that we're related to, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know if anybody can tell from how handsome we both are <laughs> that we are related, but, right. um, you know, you've, you've been through a lot, but you've also always managed to maintain that positive attitude. Everybody loves spending time with you. And, and I think it's, it's because of kind of your aura and your uh, attitude and, and how um, we all seem to have the ability to take things that may be bothering us a little bit, or we may be going through, we can kind of set that aside and realize that the people around us are, are what makes us happy. And, and, um, and we've both seemed to thrive in that. So I'm excited mm-hmm. for people to learn from you and get to know you uh, just as much. Right. Yeah, definitely. have made some interesting decisions and pursued a lot of different and uh, kind of random goals, but like have pursued them pretty aggressively. And it's always worked out, which is has been nice, you know. Right. And I think um, that's because we're, you know, we don't look at failure as a, you know, as a huge obstacle, things are gonna work to varying degrees, right? I mean, not everything's mm-hmm. perfect, but it's part of the journey and part of the experience, right? So I think at some point too, I'm excited to get into the the whole van life. We haven't mentioned that yet. Like, you, you know, you yeah. a bit of a van life for here and I'm excited to get into that and learn a little bit more about that. And none of it's perfect, right? Like it's just, right. it's all part of the journey <laughs> and we're just cruising through it. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. And I mean, that's kind of like what I was pursuing is more of a journey and, and being exposed to more variability and, um, experiences that I never had before, because I think that's what I was craving in, a um, you know, my previous life, I guess you could say, or pre-retirement where everything was kind of the same and I, but it was also like, I was just surviving, like, um, and I just needed more, I guess, you know? I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, this is what the uh, audio experience is going to be all about. A couple of just old retired dudes (laughs) sitting around shooting shit about, uh fun things wrapped around the service industry and van mm-hmm. life and i got kids i'm sure i'll talk about talk about them a bunch and um hopefully some business and some uh some hobbies and some happiness mm-hmm. yeah totally agree i love it i think this is pretty good for a first episode and crash course of what our audio experience is going to be like um i think we're going to put this out there. If anybody has any questions that they specifically want to know about us or the app, we're open to take questions. So fire away. That should be kind of interesting. Um, we'll try and answer anything uh, that you guys throw out there. And we're going to start pumping out some content on this, but we thought it was important for everybody to get to know us a little bit, kind of lay the groundwork of what we're trying to do here. Mm-hmm. And, um, for the the few family members that'll probably listen to this very first episode, right. thank you. We appreciate that. All all yeah. eight of them that will listen, um, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll see where it goes. A year from now, hopefully, we have more than uh, than eight listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. Well, good job, Dakota. I appreciate it, man. Great job to you. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll wrap up episode one right here. More to come. Thanks, everybody. Oh.